Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jason. This is Old Car Auto Guy. No, we still haven't reached 2,000 subscribers yet, but we're getting there. We are growing at roughly, right now it seems like about 8 to 10 subscribers a day. So if you're not yet subscribed to this channel, you're going to want to do so. Why? Well, let's just put it this way. Here's what's left of my 2009 Kia Sportage after we blew it up with 12 pounds of Tannerite. That's right. I blew up my 2009 Kia Sportage as part of a, I don't want to say trick, but part of a goal to get me to 2,000 subscribers and if you guys can get me there, I'll release that video. Obviously, Bubbles is gone, my, which is what we called my 2009 Kia Sportage. And, well, today we're doing a couple of things. So stay tuned. So guys, the first thing that we're going to do is we need to find a replacement for my project Bubbles. And in my last video, I showed you guys this 2000 Volkswagen Passat wagon with a turbo that could quite possibly be its replacement. But today we're going to take it for a drive, we're going to get it in the shop and check it over completely and tally up the cost on what it's going to take to get this thing road worthy. But we're going to take it for a test drive, we're going to go out to where Bubbles remains are and have one last peek and give you guys a sneak peek of the devastation that took place exactly one week ago on Sunday. So without further ado, let's hop in the old beast here, take her for a spin. So the engine light is on, the low washer fluid light is on, and the orange brake light warning is on. And on these Volkswagens, they had sensors in the pads to let you know when your pads were getting worn down. We know that the rotors are rusty as well, and uh, we're going to take a look at the cost of all that stuff. So for now, let's take it for a drive and see how well this thing works. I know that I want this heated seat to work because in the winter, leather is cold, and uh, we hope that it works. So let's go for a drive. So anytime we take a vehicle on trade, we always, always will take it for a test drive unless we know it's a lame trade-in. And what is a lame trade-in? Well, something you know just has zero value. We've got 500 bucks tied up into this car, which is if I buy it, which is what I will have to pay. So I didn't even take it for a test drive. I did a quick walk around and you could see the rotors through the wheels. You knew that you know it needed some work. The customer told me it needed a lot of work, including the exhaust, but at the end of the day, uh, we didn't drive it. This is my first drive in this and I'm happy to say that as of right now, the transmission shifts through all the gears, which is a good thing. Um, the exhaust being so loud and noisy, I have not come onto it yet. We'll do that once we get out on the back roads. Now that we're getting ready to merge onto the highway, we're going to kick this thing down so you guys can hear just how awesome it is. didn't like that. Anyways, she's going to be a beast. And for the record, yes, the heated seats work fine. My bum is toasty. Well guys, we are out here to the site where we demised of bubbles my 2009 Kia Sportage and just because I haven't released that video yet I'm not going to show you the carcass or the remains and you can probably hear off in the distance some gunfire uh, there is a shooting range uh, just across the road so uh, that was kind of part of the disguise of being able to come out here and shoot that film literally shoot the film with <laughs> and shoot uh, the Tannerite off uh, for the demise of bubbles and uh, it kind of disguised that gunshot and and, and the blow up uh, not too many people uh, likely were the wiser of what was going on so as you can see we're in a gravel pit here bubbles is in a little bit of a cutout and uh, we're going to go up on that little ridge there and see if we can find some of the remains that's left over from bubbles so 
So there's the remains of uh, Bubbles, and we're up on top of this ridge, and we're just looking for some parts that might be left over. There's a piece of what looks like it holds the window in on one of the doors. We come way back here, and this looks like one of the uh, door, door skins. Yeah, I would say that's a door skin. We'll drag that back. And there's a piece of something there. So we did find a piece of the windshield over there. Another piece of it here. I don't know if you can see the car parked over there and then just bubbles is kind of sitting in behind that little mound of dirt. But I would say at this point we're probably probably about a hundred feet away at least. Take another walk around. So probably the thing that warmed my heart the most is when I found two pieces of windshield and as I walked a little bit further I found a third. Take a look at this. How awesome is that? I am going to keep that piece and I'll frame it or I'll do something with it and I will make that a giveaway at some point in time. So we're just about done here. I'm gonna take one more quick walk around, see if there's anything that I may have missed that's worthy of taking home. So guys, we are out here at the site of the demise of Bubbles and you may or may not be able to see behind me uh, what is left of Bubbles. Now we're not gonna to get too close to it. I don't wanna show it off until we hit 2000 subscribers and release that video, but I figured from this distance, I'll show you what the camera picks up. Let's take a look. So right over here is a little cut in the pit and whether you can see it or not, that is where Bubbles remains lie. In an upcoming episode, we will show you Bubbles remains being hauled off by a wrecker and uh, being taken to its forever home or at least its temporary landing spot before it hits the crusher. So. I'm sure there'll be some challenges there getting that loaded up and strapped in and kind of all pulled that together because when she blew up it blew the sides right open like a wishbone so uh, we'll likely have to bring some ratchet straps and strap it all back together somehow but nevertheless that's why we hired the professionals. One hour later. So now that we've got this thing back in the shop we're going to get it up in the air and I'll show you everything that I found that's wrong with it and uh, then we'll take a look at the price on what it's gonna cost to fix it up. So let's get her up in the air. So before we go too far, I wanna show you the front end, how this front control arm has got quite a bit of play in it. So we've gotta start by replacing that before we can determine whether or not there's any other play. So as we start at the front and we go back, uh, we, we do notice that there's no major leaks uh, coming from the engine and or the transmission. We move up here, we see the transmission pan is quite dented up a little bit right there. Again, nothing too serious. But here's our exhaust problem. Not saying I don't enjoy the sound, but it's right underneath you and it drones so bad in overdrive. We come back here, the muffler, the outside shell of the muffler is uh, rusting off. You know, parts are flaking off of it. It's, uh, but it's solid, it's still, it's not leaking from the muffler at all. We come back here and we've got a loose uh, heat shield. But the rear frame is still in pretty good shape. There's all kinds of paint left on that frame. Uh, it's a little bit scaly back here, but uh, look at that brake rotor. It's in really, really bad shape. The pads are worn out on both sides. And there's that, uh, there's that back brake rotor on the driver's side. As we take a look at the rocker panels, this is one thing that I was surprised at is they are solid and even underneath this plastic piece here it's still in really good shape. I expected those rockers to be completely rotten. Now this is just the seam here and uh, there's a little bit of scale there but it's not perforated, it's not all the way through and in fact like I said before I'm lifting 
on the rocker panel and it's holding the car no issues these frame rails and uh, oh little spot right there maybe nothing too serious and they'll plug out of place we'll have to fix that up but uh, at the end of the day we get rid of some of this loose heat shield and get that exhaust fixed brakes front brakes are uh, pretty rusty as well wow same thing over here we've got a CV boot that looks like it's torn on the end other than that now those tires, as you can see, are right at the wear bar. They're not completely beat yet, but if I'm going to be driving this thing for the winter, I'm going to want some uh, snow tires on this thing. This side's dry rotted quite bad. And it's a mismatched tire. We come back here. These tires are completely worn out, right down to almost smooth. And this one here possibly has a broken belt in it. She's kind of cupped and irregularly worn there. So in reality, there's not a whole lot on this car that can't be fixed for a few bucks. I mean, tires are probably going to be the most expensive thing. But uh, let's go take a look and see what the costs are going to be for pads and rotors all the way around and four tires and a control arm. Okay, so here's what it's gonna to cost to get this thing up to par. I'm gonna put that cost uh, right up here. So front pads, $22.95, rotors are $46 a piece. Uh, rear pads, uh, $22.95, uh, rear rotors, $53.40 a piece. Uh, control arm for that front one uh, is $47.76, and I probably will do the back one uh, while I got it right there for $56. So that's $295.58. Four tires, about $64 a piece, and that's going with the stock tire size for a grand total of $551.58. I'll pay $500 for the car. $551.58 puts me just over a thousand, and that gets me a car that will pass inspection. Oh, I forgot the flex, uh, the flex pipe. So that, uh, with Tim's help, that's probably going to be right around $50. Bucks. So That'll get me to pass inspection so that I can drive this thing all winter. But I am thinking about doing a little bit something different with the wheel and tire combination. Now, we joked about lifting this thing and putting bigger wheels and tires on it. I'm pretty much guaranteed that we're not going to be able to put 31s on this thing like we did bubbles. But the Audi A4 Quattro is basically the same rig as this Passat. And those things have an elevated suspension and bigger wheels and tires. So we're going to take a look at that and see what it's going to take to get this thing setting up a little bit more and maybe some bigger meats on it. Now, the lights that were on the dash was the check engine, the brake light, and the low washer fluid light. Well, the easy one to check, the washer fluid. Let's dump a gallon in, make sure it's not running out the bottom. I don't hear any leaking out. Only what I spilled. Okay, let's see if that light went out. Well, there's one down. Now let's check that engine light. So under the engine control module, it says we've got three faults. Let's take a look and see what it says. So the first one, is 16795 something air injection system incorrect flow power supply terminal 30 volt voltage too low ignition distributor something blah 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 no idea what any of these mean but we are going to uh, take a snapshot we'll look them up but in the meantime I will clear them as well and see if they come right back on so the codes are now clear we're going to start the car up and for now it looks like the only light that's left on is for those brakes so as I said in my previous video I thought then that I was going to pull the trigger but I'm gonna confirm it right now I've driven the vehicle it drives very well very quiet 
other than that ball joint giving a slight bit of rattle and the exhaust being noisy and the brakes pumping a little bit and grinding a little bit and the heat shield rattling and the paint bubbling. I mean, other than that stuff, it seems to ride like a really good vehicle. So we are going to pull the trigger. This will be the next beater vehicle on the channel. I need your guys' help to come up with a name for the Beater V-Dub. Use your imagination. We'll do a contest on Instagram with the top three, and then we'll have a little vote and see how that goes. I am going to put the call out one more time for you guys to help get my channel to 2,000 subscribers because I want to release the video of me blowing up my project bubbles. And uh, I can't do it without your guys' help. So if you like these videos, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see bubbles exploded and want that video released, share these videos. Get the words out to your friends and all your colleagues. If they like cars, anything to do with cars, this is the channel. We don't just do projects. We don't just talk about the business of my used car dealership. We have a lot of fun too. Project bubbles being blown up is one of them. You're not going to want to miss it, but we've got to get the 2,000 subscribers to see it. Guys, stay focused on the windshield, not the rear view mirror. I love you all. God bless. Let's do it again real soon. Don't forget, share these videos.